just remarkable in giving an illustration and a demonstration how God would would uh, bless us and keep us right to the very end and I guess maybe teaching us how to leave this world and uh, the Lord just blessed her so keep her family in prayer and they uh, the uh, memorial service will not be till the 25th at one o'clock here 25th of the month at one o'clock, so keep that uh, in mind as well. Get this announcement. It's it's my total misunderstanding. I thought both November and December, the senior dinner would be the second Thursday. El Romo. It's only December that it's going to be the second Thursday. This month's senior dinner will be the third Thursday, which is the normal time. And so all of the people that have heard that wrong when I announced it, uh, let them know that that it's not true, <clears throat> that the pastor knows very little of what he's speaking of, and uh, tell them that uh, it is the third Thursday, of course, at the regular time for November. The second 
Thursday, only December. Is that correct? Now, you're going to have to help spread it around a little bit. Uh, we're going to do some advertising to that effect. We'll let it be known on the radio and, and try to get something in the paper and a sign on here. But, but I think that it will be fine. And, uh, and the word will get around. Believe me, the word will get around, I think. Are there, uh, oh, uh, Jennifer has asked that, the, that there are extra operation Christmas child brochures. Now, you'll need one of those if you're packing your own shoebox. You'll need that, and uh, you'll need the labels uh, also in, uh, on, on the boxes that's in that, that brochure. So there, they are in the back table, so keep that in mind. I believe that's all I have. There is a, a fall supper meeting on the 10th at, at uh, Military Street for the Southern Aristic Baptist Association. That meeting is at 5 o'clock. Supper is at 5.30 in, in worship. The fall rally is there. You'll see that as well in your bulletin. Uh, there's a schedule for the, the My Hope America with Billy Graham. And are there other announcements that need to be made? I do know that there's a very, also a very special birthday. Lila Gardner will be 100 years old. And uh, it would be nice if you would send her a card or, or so somebody could read it to her or so on. Craig, what day is that? Uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Any others? Other announcements? Yeah, we will be leaving immediately after the service this morning. So we're not going to be rude, but we are going to bolt. As soon as we have our, uh, our service, we'll go right on out and, and, uh, and start down to see how far south we can get before it gets too late. And uh, I'll be going to... What? She knows the trail. Did you leave any markers along the way, or did you notch out any trees, or? Good. Okay, I'll follow the candy wrappers. Anyway, that's what we'll be doing. Pray for us as we travel. We're going to make it a little more extensive so that uh, we don't have to drive so many hours in any one day. We'll, we're going to go a little slower. But uh, not speed wise, but stopping wise. And, uh, and then remember my mom's surgery this week. And uh, she'll be having uh, ovarian cancer surgery. She's nervous about the surgery, of course, but pray for her and the rest of the family as well. Are there, are there others? All right. Let's please turn your. Hymn books to page 579, 579, Jesus Loves Me.
I'm kind of amazed that the only time we think of singing that song is for little kids. Doesn't he love, love adults as well? Absolutely. Let's pray. Our Lord, thank you for this gathering, for this time together that we have set aside by your help to worship you in spirit and in truth, to lift our hearts in song and praise and thanksgiving, to open our hearts to your blessings, Lord, to your leadership and your fellowship with us in our lives as, Lord, we fellowship one with the other. Draw near to us and help us to sense that this morning, to know your presence and to know, Lord, that you are good and that you love us and you care for us. And, Lord, you can be and are in the very midst of this service in such a way that your presence is reality. Guide us now through all these things that we do this morning as we draw close to you. Thank you, Lord, for the power of prayer, for teaching us to pray, for giving us the model prayer, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Children's story at this time. Come on down. I loved hearing the little ones all singing, and I heard some of them saying the Lord's Prayer. That's great. Do so good. Oh, my, my, look at this. Isn't this. Can we spread out this a little bit? Spread out a little bit. On out a little bit. Move on over a little. A little more. A little more. A little more. Hey, Johnny. There we go. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Okay, there we go. All right, okay, you come back this way now. All right, it's like herding cattle. My goodness. Good to see all of you this morning. You know, you're like, you're just like breaths of fresh air or seeing the sunshine come up over the, over the horizon. You're great. It's wonderful. It makes everybody happy to see all of you. Okay, who's got a rainbow? We got to watch a new movie. What? Epic. Good. I got my ears pierced yesterday. You did, and look at it. Did it hurt? Not as much as I thought. <laughs> They're very pretty. I like those. I got to see a partridge up close yesterday while I was hunting. You did? Oh, my goodness, Pastor, did you hear that? Yeah. Oh, well, I knew he'd ask. <laughs> I knew he would. Don't tell him. Okay? I got to watch Monster's anniversary yesterday. You did. Was it fun? All right. Um, Bless your heart. Come on. You can think of something. Nothing made you happy this week? Um, think of it. Um, I'm writing a book that's going to be around 1,000 pages once I finish. Isn't this amazing? I never saw anything like this. This makes me tired just looking at that. And I'm on page 155. I think you only got 800 and some to go. Very good, Ben. I'm proud of you. Um, we went trick-or-treating. Did you get a bunch of candy? You should have come to my house. I'd have give you a whole sack full because the pastor don't need it. He eats what's left. Yeah, do you hear about the um, Wesleyan Church trunk or treating? That's where we always go, yeah. Yes, isn't that wonderful that they do that? It saved everybody getting all wet, didn't they? Although we did have some pretty drowned rats. Um, um, last week I went to Florida. You did? Where did you go down there? To Disney. I just figured that's where you must have gone. Was it fun? Yeah. Same as her. <laughs> Did you have, one of these days I'm going to ask you before her, okay? Did you have fun too? Yes. What's the one thing you liked the most? 
going to Epcot. You went to Epcot? Oh, I have it too. What did you like? Oh, I like the rock and roller coaster. It goes upside down. Oh, my goodness. Upside down. Oh, my. I'll tell you, you all just have the best rainbows I've ever seen. Wait a minute. I still got a pile here. Um. I, I don't know. Uh, you try to think of one between now and three weeks from now, okay? That'll give you time, okay? Well, I'm so glad that you all have rainbows. Keep looking for them, okay? Because you have them. Believe it or not, even though Kyle couldn't think of one, he's had rainbows every day. He just don't remember them. But he did have some, and you all have had rainbows every day. Do you know that? Every day. Oh, um, well, it's not really a rainbow, but um, I had to waste a bunch of candy because at the Chunk or Treat, pep people kept dropping them, and I wanted to pick them up so bad, but they were all dirty and muddy. <laughs> and they just wasted all that candy. They wasted all that good candy. Oh, <laughs> probably saved three cavities in your teeth by not picking them up. I'm so glad you all, did you all go trick-or-treating, most of you or whatever? Did you? Yeah, you had fun, didn't you? Yeah, it's fun to get candy, isn't it? Well, you know what? Um, I wanted to ask you today, who loves you? Who loves you? Everybody, Everybody loves you? <laughs> wow, that's pretty good. That ought to make you happy. Who, who loves us? God. God loves us, doesn't he? How about, does anybody else love us? Moms and dads. Moms and dads love you. Who else? Your grandparents. Your family. Jesus. Me. You love yourself? Oh, good. That's good. What do we say? Love yourself first. Hey. Right. Who loves you? Um, my mom and my dad. Mom and your dad. Who loves you? Um, family and friends. Your friends. Who loves you? My family and Jesus. Same as her. Same as her. Isn't it nice that she can think for you? It is, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you know what? You're right. People around you love you, don't they? It doesn't matter if you're good, bad, or whatever. They still love you, don't they? I mean, even your parents, they love you no matter what you do, don't they? Sure they do. Well, pastor loves you. I love you. All these people out here love you. But you know what? There's probably people around you that don't love you, and you know why? They don't know you. They don't know you. Do you know how to get people to know you? Talk to them. Talk to them. When you see someone on the street, don't just walk by them with your head down or your eyes shut. Talk to them. Say hi. That's all you got to do. Smile and say hi. You'd be surprised how many people will remember you if you just say hi. You see, that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to be friendly. He wants us to love others. He wants us to show Jesus' love in our faces, in the way that we act, in the way that, that we talk, everything. Show Jesus' love. And then you'll be surprised how many people will love you back. If you love, they'll love you back. You know that? Remember that. God is love, and God wants us to be loved, too. He wants us to love and to show love the same way that he does. So let's try from now on. It's so easy to not like someone, but it's harder to love them, and you've got to learn to love them because Jesus loves us, and we're hard to love, but he still loves us. So let's try, starting today, let's, let's be friendly to everybody around us, and let's learn to love each other, okay, the way that Jesus loves us. Can we do that? Sure, we can. Can we do it? Yes, we can do it, can't we? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for these children. Thank you for the love that you give us all. Help us, Lord, to learn to love each other in a very special way. That, Lord, we can display your love, the love that you give us to someone else. Thank you, Father, for all the things that you've done for us and given us. In your name we pray. Amen. Now, back that way. Oh, wait a minute. Whoa. Don't, unless your parents are with you or whatever, be careful about being too friendly with strangers alone, okay? That's true. We don't do that. Seriously. That's true. Yeah, 
Now you don't want to. Not, not in this world. No, you don't want to speak to strangers by yourself, just with your parents. All right. Remember that. Grace forgets what the uh, age is today. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's. Um, Again, take uh, some time to remember Corliss's family. We were asked to do that. Also, are there other uh, requests that uh, that you have before we pray? Any blessings, concerns? Yes. Thank you. Other, yes. The Hovey family. Goose. Yeah, that last week you know he was balking on the whole thing, but since then, he's it's been explained to him how it works, and he's okay with it at this point. So, it could happen. Uh, the process could be done in three to four weeks, possibly, possibly. Others? Pat, what's the last name? Brown. Brown. Okay. Okay, Pat Brown. Others? Let's bow our heads and hearts together in prayer. Lord, how good it is to come to you in prayer. What a sense of amazement I have that people just like us can go before the God of the universe bring our petitions in the name of Jesus, to bring our praise, our thanksgiving, to appreciate, Lord, your blessings that you provide, and then, Lord, to share our concerns. Lord, just like an open mic, how we thank you. Lord, I can't imagine a, a, a Christian life without a right to pray and to come to you for all these things. We think of the old church song, where could I go but to the Lord? And there's been many times in our lives where we have thought that. Where could we go but to the Lord? And so we rejoice in our ability and, and in, Lord, our invitation to bring our prayers to you. We pray, Lord, for each one in this congregation. Several concerns have been mentioned. Some families going through bereavement and, and, and families, Lord, uh, that uh, are struggling. Uh, we, we pray, Lord, that you would be with each of these struggling families. We pray, Lord, that... Uh, uh, as some are, are out of the hospital, some uh, that will be maybe getting out today that we spoke with, we just pray, Lord, for their continual care and, Lord, that they would get better and feel better. And, uh, and we pray for them, each one of them, as we think of them. We ask, Lord, that your presence would be in our church and in our boards and our committees as, Lord, we try to fulfill... Uh, the commitment that this church has of spreading the gospel, of discipling Christians in this community, 
We thank, Lord, of the commitment that we have as we give monies uh, around the world, uh, helping missionaries spread the gospel, feed the hungry, bring uh, healing to the sick, and all these things that missionaries do, and taking care of the homeless and, and caring for the children. And we thank you, Lord, for all of that that's going on that we can have a part of. We pray, Lord, for our country, but we pray, Lord, for our national leaders and, Lord, for our state leaders as well. We pray for the other countries of the world. We pray for presidents and premiers and prime ministers, and we pray for parliaments, and we pray, Lord, that, that uh, even those who uh, are run by dictators, that some way, somehow, the power of God would break through through Jesus. Changes could take place that would be good. And Lord, that could bring peace and safety to people. We ask, Lord, that you would be now with um, the other churches in our community that are preaching and spreading the gospel for other churches around our nation, around the world, on this Lord's Day, that God would be would be exalted and that the name of Jesus would be lifted up. We ask, Lord, that uh, those traveling, and we know there's several, including our own family, we pray that you would be with us as well. And we ask that your directions and guidance would be upon our church in our absence from them because we know, Lord, that they're in good hands. We ask and we give thanks and we pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. We would ask the ushers to come forward at this time for the tithes and the offerings.
Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we just thank you for this morning worship service. Help us, Lord, to have our hearts open to worship you. Help us to be still in your presence, knowing that you are the Lord. And we just bring forth our tithes and offerings, Lord. Ask that you just bless them and multiply them, Lord, and bless those who give and pray for the ministry. And we just pray, Lord, for the gospel message of Jesus Christ to be proclaimed throughout our community and throughout our nation and throughout this world. Bless us now, we pray, in the name that's above every name. In Jesus' name, amen. You may welcome and greet one another. Oh, 
Certainly we are so thankful for his love. That's kind of been the theme uh, today, and it's a good thing. Uh, two things I did want to mention that I didn't mention earlier. The men's supper is tomorrow night. And the instructions on the back there as to when it is and so on. And if you want to meet with the men, be here at 6. So keep that in mind. It's at, it's at uh, New Limerick. Secondly, I did mean to mention that Don Stewart has been back in the hospital for several days. and But he was much better yesterday. <clears throat> and if he continues to be okay today, he probably could go home this afternoon. But uh, he's... Uh, He's had a siege of it, and keep him in, in your prayers as well. You know, uh, th there's kind of two ways of getting in trouble. And, and uh, one way is to do the wrong thing. That's, to do the wrong thing can get you in trouble. Get you in trouble with the law, get you in trouble at work, get you in trouble with your mate, big trouble with your mate. But anyway, <laughs> if you do the wrong thing. And then the other way of getting in trouble is the opposite kind of, and that's not doing the right thing getting in trouble for not doing something uh, that we should be doing and that we're not doing. Uh, I was thinking how sometimes you can get in trouble with the law even though you didn't do the wrong thing. For instance, I mean, you didn't do the deed. Uh, to make a threatening remark to somebody in certain circumstances or to threaten that you're going to blow up a school or, or something can make serious problems. Or I believe, and, and, and Jeffrey might know this, but I believe to threaten the president even in jest, or you can say it's in jest, I believe might be a felony. Is that right? And... and uh, at an airport, the last thing you want to do, the last thing you want to do is in just telling somebody that you have a bomb on you. You'll shut down the whole airport and, uh, and so on. The lesson today, the lesson today is about Israel, particularly Judah, who was breaking both rules. They, they were doing the wrong thing and not doing the right thing. Not doing, uh, you know, the old sins of omission, doing something bad, the sins of commission. Uh, and that's what they were doing. And they were just making a mess of the nation. Now, whenever you study these kind of passages in the Old Testament, and you extrapolate it to the, our day, our modern time, to today, then many times it, it has the context of making, if Israel is making a mess out of Israel, isn't it possible that sometimes we can make a mess in our own lives as Christians? I've done that. I, I have made messes in my Christian life since I come to know the Lord when I was about 20 years old. I've done that. I've been there. I don't like it, but I've done it. Sometimes churches make messes. Gary, Gary was uh, the uh, executive down at, at, at Abcom for several years, and he could tell you some unbelievable messes that churches have made. Isn't that right? Unbelievable sometimes. And pastors many times are, are just as guilty. And so that's kind of what this lesson is about. And, and I, I think it is a, an interesting thing. In, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, 
verse 10. We'll begin there. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the law of our God, you people of, Gom of Gomorrah. The multitude of your sacrifices, what are they to me, says the Lord? I have more than enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fattened animals. I have no pleasure in the blood of bulls and lambs and goats. When you come to appear before me, who has asked this of you, this trampling of my courts? Stop bringing meaningless offerings. Your incense is detestable to me, new moons, Sabbaths, and convocations. I cannot bear your evil assemblies, your new moon festivals, and your appointed feasts my soul hates. They have become a burden to me. I'm weary of bearing them when you spread out your hands in prayer. I will hide my eyes from you. Even if you offer many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash and make yourselves clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Encourage the oppressed. Defend the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. Come now. Let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. And though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Uh, he starts off by saying, hear, hear the words of the Lord, you of Sodom and Gomorrah. He wasn't speaking to the cities now of Sodom and Gomorrah who had been destroyed. He was speaking of those who were doing evil. Because any time that Sodom and Gomorrah is mentioned in this sense in the Old Testament, it's talking about evil and wickedness and so on. And he said, you who are doing wrong things and, 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 and may be proud of it and so on, uh, to me you're like Sodom and Gomorrah. And yet, you continue to be a religious people in many ways. You, you bring the sacrifices. What are they to me? I, I have more than enough burnt offerings. I have no pleasure in the blood that's shed there for sacrifices. They're meaningless to me. Stop bringing these meaningless offerings. Your incense, that's supposed to be a pleasant smell and, and, and remind you of God and, and I... I Breathe those incenses into my own spiritual nostrils and they make me sick. I don't even like to smell them. Those new moon days that you celebrate and the Sabbaths and, and the evil assemblies and all these things, they've become a burden to me. My soul, God said, hates it. When you spread out your hands in prayer, I hide my eyes from you. I will not listen. You didn't know the Lord would say such things as that, did you? You know, we could be just Pollyanna and everything's going to be fine. And there was a book when I was in college, finishing up my degree, which took me nine years, partly because of an in, uh, unquestionable dumbness, but also because I worked and just went in the summers. I was teaching school and you didn't have to have four years. And I would go back to school in the summer. And, uh, and it took quite a while. Uh, the president was only there eight years and I was there nine. <laughs> but anyway, having said that, I remember a book came out by some religious person who I used to know the name, but don't remember it anymore. And the name of it was, I'm okay, you're okay. Remember that book? I'm okay, you're okay. And it wasn't my favorite book, especially at that time. But uh, uh, the whole idea that everything's all right, it, it isn't always all right. Things aren't always okay. I, I know what he's saying, and I'll get to that in a minute, but, but, uh, but there are times when God looks upon our lives 
And he says, Arthur, it's not okay. It's not okay. In this scripture, we, we, we hear from the Lord that these people were, were going to be sent into captivity because it wasn't okay. They were going to lose their government. They were going to lose their land. They were going to be literally carried off of their lands right out of their homes, taken to a foreign country far away. Most of them, many of them, would never get back though as a nation they would be allowed to come back. And the promise of restoration was given to them before they were carried away. God said, this time will pass. You will learn. You will learn this lesson. And you'll be able someday, your family at least and others may be able to come back home if they please. God said in one big term, I don't like just religion. I don't like just religion. I want you to serve me sincerely with all of your hearts. That's what he's saying. Has that message ever changed? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think God wants us to love him and live for him and serve him and others and love others and care about others as well. Now, when I was home, the, the, the preachers in, in my hill land, my hill country, never lost an occasion to preach an evangelistic service. They, they did it at weddings. They did it at funerals. They did it when there would be 15 Christians there. Just, just If there would be 15 missions there, missionaries there who had given their heart to the Lord, they would probably preach an evangelistic service and invite them to come to the altar. And so this scripture where it says, Come, let us reason together, though your sins be scarred, was always preached as an evangelistic sermon. And it could be, it, it could be that. But let's not lose the, fa the fact and the idea that this was already God's people, supposedly, God's chosen people in God's land, in a nation that was to be the example nation of the world of how God, Yahweh, was the God of God, the Lord of Lords, the one true God. And so he's talking to what you and I today would call church people. And he's saying to these people, you're plenty religious, but it doesn't count. It's not getting anywhere. And so you need to revamp your life somewhat and, and examine your life. And I mentioned something like that last week. In this service, the, the, the scriptures were similar, only last week was Jeremiah. And I really think it's good for most of us, at least for me, to periodically make sure I'm on target, trying to do that which is right, because I don't always, and, and, and really examine self-examination. You know, rather than to have somebody else point out our faults, maybe just peer once in a while, we actually know what most of our faults are and try to work on them. Is there anything wrong with that? Now, you say, oh boy, the preacher's had some kind of a, some kind of a lapse. He's preaching works. Getting the works is going to bring salvation to you. I'm not at all. We all know that you're saved by grace because of faith in Jesus Christ. But we're talking about people that we're already God's people as we are already God's people who have given our hearts and lives to him. But in our Christian walk, we need to always remember these kinds of scriptures. Remember the failings of Israel. Remembering how God had to bring them out of their country into a foreign land. How they went through a lot of things because they had messed up their country. 
just like sometimes we can mess up our lives. Now, that's all been negative so far. True, but negative. But listen to what he says toward the end. Come now. Let us reason together. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be like wool. Wool meaning white. White, very white, very pure, very cleansed. When we sense a need for the Lord and a re a vamping, a rededication, a re-emphasis on serving Him, uh, uh, if we sometimes lose a little bit of our excitement. You know, sometimes I think pastors really have to watch the fact that when we take things ho-hum and lose our enthusiasm, we're not doing our churches any favor. And so we've got to be careful with that, that it doesn't become hum-ho and just something that we automatically do. I've done this long enough now that I can kind of stand up here and fake it pretty well, and some of you may not know the difference. But I know the difference, and God knows the difference. And i got to make sure that I'm not just rotely going through these things that I've studied before and I know and so on, and that I'm excited about it, and that it's meaningful to me. And I care about it. And it's real. It's sincere. Because anything less than that, then I'm failing you. And any time that you're less than sincere, you, you're failing the Lord. Here's the bottom line. I could probably deceive some of you. Once in a while, not very often, I can deceive Rose but I can never deceive the Lord. God knows my heart, and he knows when I'm faking it. And I have faked it before. I thought of all these bad things these people are being condemned for are things at one time or another I may have been just as guilty. Your evil deeds, your, you, 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 the wrong things that you do, the not doing the right things, not seeking justice for others, not encouraging the oppressed, uh, not defending the fatherless, not pleading for the cause of the widow or the helpless. I've probably done most of those things since I've pronounced that I was a Christian. I think one failing of the evangelical co Christian community, evangelicals, is sometimes we're not very compassionate. And sometimes we don't take care of the needy ones. We don't take care of the fallen. We don't encourage the oppressed. We don't seek justice for others. We want justice when it's in our favor, but we don't seek it for others. I, I've heard good Christian people, and, and I know I'm getting maybe close to the bone, but we'll say about some poor people, well... Lazy bums, they deserve to be poor. I don't imagine that's what Jesus would say. I, I think the fact that they're poor, God would have us to have empathy for them. And, and God would have us to help those who are being oppressed and to help those who aren't getting justice. Isn't it amazing that the poorer you are, the less ability you have in court of getting out of a crime, and that the richer you are, the better chance you've got of getting out of it even if you did it. Is that amazing? It, is it amazing that the richest country on earth, the country with some of the greatest laws on earth, incar incarcerate more people per capita than any country on earth. Wow. Sometimes we really haven't really helped the oppressed. But the good news is we can come to the Lord in such a way 
that even though our sins be as scarlet, they can be white as snow. God, why do we say, uh, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors? Are those just words? Or do we need to pray those words? Asking the Lord to forgive us our sins, our debtors, our trespasses. Or our debts, I should say. As he has forgiven us. How meaningful that really is. And so, how does all that play out? Very quickly. I think that it, care, it tells us that sometimes we're careless with our Christian lives and our Christians living. And we need to do all that we can to be very serious about pleasing and serving the Lord. I need to do that as well. I, I've, I've served the Lord, like I said, a long time now. And, and, and he knows when I'm being careless. Secondly, we have the opportunity to come, let us reason together with the Lord, to open up to him, to open up the road to spiritual progress and growth and discipleship to being led daily by Jesus. And that's what we need to do. And then, once we get to that point, this is very important. Now, if you missed this, you've missed something important. And I'm about done, so hang on, hang in another minute or two. Once you've come to the Lord, don't let the devil fill us with so much guilt because we're not perfect, because we failed, because we made a mess in, our, in an area of our life, to be filled with so much guilt that we can't enjoy the presence of God in our lives. That's important. You see, if the devil can't get you to do anything else, he can make you feel guilty. And if he can make you feel guilty, he's had a great victory. <laughs> I have to tell you, this, this is kind of goofy, but a guy, a guy was uh, out working in a hot summer day and he just had to have a beer. And so he went into the bar, and he ordered a beer, and the bartender slid him a beer. Kind of an odd story for a church, but anyway. Uh, slid him a beer across the bar. He picked up the beer and looked at it, and the hand started shaking a little bit, and threw it in the bartender's face. And then he grabbed the bartender, and he said, oh, I'm so sorry. I, I, ever since I've been young, I've had the compulsion to do that. And I've just, I've done it before. I'm just so sorry. And he was trying to clean it off of him and saw him. The bartender was curious. He said, out of here, I'll never serve you again. You're not ever welcome here. Out of here. I don't care how guilty you are and how sorry. Several months later, the man come walking back in. Whoa, out of here. You're, you're. He said, no, no. I, I've been under the help of a, very good psychiatrist in the city for weeks and months. And, and I, I, I'm okay now. Well, he said, I guess I could serve you. You want a beer, I guess. Well, I do. And he gave him the beer, and the guy picked it up and looked at it, and his hand started shaking a little, and he threw it in his face. And the, in fury, the bartender said, I, I thought you'd been to a psychiatrist and that you're well. He said, well, I am. I still have the compulsion, but I don't feel guilty anymore. <laughs> and I think that's how we are when we keep doing the same things, not too good over and over and over. I, I'll close with this. That's enough, isn't it? I'll close with this. Little boy, uh, his father gave him a slingshot. How many of you, have ever, how many of you guys have ever owned a slingshot? Have any of you women ever owned the slingshot? Come on. Oh, I see some hands. Yeah. Yeah. He got pretty good with it. And one day, his grandmother's duck was out in the garden. I don't think he meant to kill it, but he said, I'm going to see if I can hit that duck. And he pulled his sling out and let loose of that stone and it went right straight and hit that duck right in the head. Down it went, dead as a 
hammer or doornail or wherever you think is dead. Oh man, am I in trouble? He thought. And he ran and he got the duck and he picked it up and he ran to the wood pile and he put it under some wood and the wood pile and hit it. And he got up and he turned around and there stood his sister. She didn't say a word. And he didn't say a word. And they went to the house shortly after. And his grandmother said to the little girl, Honey, you need to help Grandma fix supper tonight. She said, Oh, I, I would, but Tommy agreed to do that. And Tommy looked at her and she said, Remember the duck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Grandma, I want to help you. Okay. They got done with dinner and she said, I need you to, to little girl, help me do the, the dishes. Well, I, I would, but Tommy said he wanted to do that too. And he said, I did. She said, remember the duck. <laughs> oh, yes, Grandma, I need to help. I want to help you. I want to help you do that. And on it went for two or three days. And finally, the boy couldn't stand it any longer. And he went in and said, Grandma, I, I didn't mean to kill it, but I shot and killed your duck that you've been missing. And she said, honey, I was looking out the window when you did that. And I saw it. And I wondered how long you was going to let your sister blackmail you before you told me the truth. <laughs> I think of that, and I think that that's what the devil does to us sometimes when we don't Tell the truth to the Lord. She said, I love you and gave him a hug. And I'm telling you that God loves you and he'll give you a hug. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word, for teaching us, helping us to, Lord, allow you to straighten out the entanglements and the messes that sometimes we make in our own lives. And then, Lord, to know that you love us and not let our enemy cause us to be so guilt-ridden. Give us the peace and the joy and the love of Christ in our hearts and lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As you know, in our church and in most churches like ours, the... Uh, Lord's Supper is open to all who know the Lord and want to receive it. And we do it, of course, the, normally the first Sunday of every month. And uh, so you are certainly invited to join us, even as visitors. If the deacons will come on down, I'll read some scripture in 1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this uh, bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Shall we pray? Thank you, Lord, for this time of remembrance. Remembering the meaning of the cup and the blood. Jesus Christ shedding his blood for us. His flesh for us. Bless us together. Forgive us of our sins. Forgive us of those things which cause messes in our lives as we receive this communion. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you. That night Jesus took the bread and he blessed it and he gave it to the disciples and he said, take, eat, this is my body. Please stand, please. That night Jesus took the cup and he gave thanks for it and he said, drink you all of it for this is the cup of the New Testament. Thereupon they sang a hymn and went out into the night. Let's gather in our big circle. We'll sing the first and then the, the uh, when we've been there 10,000 years, both.
And all the people said, Amen. Amen.